Hello! In this video, we'll discuss adjusted basis. What exactly is adjusted basis? We'll talk about the general concepts involved regarding adjusted basis, but first, I want to remind you from the Realize Gain or Loss video, the gateway rule. Whenever we have a sale or other disposition of property, we always have to look at the formula amount realized minus the adjusted basis. And this gives us the realized gain or loss. Realized gain if it's positive, realized loss if it's negative. Now in a previous video, I defined what exactly amount realized is. In this video, we're gonna talk about what is adjusted basis. So the general adjusted basis rule is defined in the Internal Revenue Code. And it specifically says that adjusted basis, so the general definition of adjusted basis, and I'm going to abbreviate that AB, starts out by saying adjusted basis is the unadjusted basis that's determined throughout the Internal Revenue Code, and then you make certain adjustments, and that gives you adjusted basis. So what you see here is a puzzle, and we're going to fill in these puzzle pieces as we go, but we're going to get to the actual adjusted basis. So again, the general definition starts out by saying we have to look for unadjusted basis rules, unadjusted basis rules throughout the Internal Revenue Code, unadjusted basis. Now before I talk about some of the common unadjusted basis rules in the Internal Revenue Code, there's really five I want to highlight, and there's, there's hundreds throughout the Internal Revenue Code, hundreds. But before we talk about that, let's talk briefly about what exactly is the concept of adjusted basis. Well, if you remember in previous videos, I mentioned that our tax system is based on income tax. Income tax. And you have to define, well, what exactly is income? And that's a very difficult concept because the tax definition of income is made up of economic, accounting, social considerations. But really, what, where, where the Internal Revenue Code got its baseline for our income-based system, not value-based system, our income-based system, is from the Haig-Simons definition of income. And one of the key elements of the Haig-Simon definition of income deals with gain. Not simply the gross revenue or gross income with respect to the item defined differently from tax law, right? So don't think about like gross revenue. Income is what tax income is, okay? And we talked about definition of gross income in previous videos and whatnot. But when it comes to adjusted basis, it's a element, a foundational element that's extremely important for understanding income. Let me give you an example. Let's say you bought some stock for $1,000 a share. Very expensive stock, you buy the stock, right? And the stock goes up in value. Stock goes up in value $2,000 a week later. And you say, I'm gonna sell the stock because I think that this stock, it's a great time to sell it. So you sell the stock. Well, is the income gonna be the full $2,000 you receive? Well, that's what the Haig Simons definition of income is looking at. And it's really getting at income in that situation is limited to the gain from that transaction. If you actually look in the Internal Revenue Code for the definition of gross income, one of those items through the broad language actually says gain on property. Well, to determine gain, there has to be some mechanism we have to keep in mind. So again, going with the Haig Simons definition of income, dealing with economic gain, and having an, an element, a tax element, that we can actually determine what the gain is for tax purposes, that's what adjusted basis is all about. Adjusted basis is a unrecovered house, if you will, or it's a house of unrecovered capital. I like to think of it like a bucket. So here's a bucket, right? We have a bucket. It's more like a salt shaker, right? And the you know, bucket is filled up a certain amount. And as that bucket is lowered the basis, so this is the basis. The adjusted basis is like bucket. And as you take certain tax benefits away from that bucket, the amount goes down. And when it goes down all the way and you sell that item, that stock 
or that, that asset, you have a sale which results in a realized gain or loss calculation, the adjusted basis has been reduced over the life of the asset. So adjusted basis keeps a running tally of that unrecovered storehouse of capital, if you will. Okay, so it's, 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 it really has two elements. It's a way for us to determine the gain on transactions, the gain or loss on transactions. It's a, it's a mathematical uh, way that we can keep track of that. And the other idea is it's this economic unrecovered storehouse of capital that has got, not yet been uh, recovered in terms of tax because depreciation, amortization, um, those things come from basis, as you've seen in previous videos. Now we're talking about how we actually define adjusted basis. So again, the general definition starts out the baseline of that. It says, okay, we have to look at the rules of unadjusted basis. And the first one that I want to mention is cost. Cost basis. And this one I have written out huge. I have this written huge. I'm going to put some asterisks next to this because cost basis, I'm going to underline it too. Cost basis makes up 90% of all property out there. How we determine the basis. It's a very simple principle. Whatever you pay for something is the basis of the item. So if you buy an item in a arm's length transaction or even a related party transaction at times, whatever you're paying is the cost. And that is what the basis is. So if you buy a computer for $1,000 and you're trying to determine what the basis is, it's simply $1,000. You buy a bottle of water for $2, the basis of that water is $2. That's, that's, the, that's the most common basis rule out there, cost basis principle. All right, so some other basis rules include inheritance. So there's a special rule regarding if you inherit property or you receive it from a trust upon someone's death. And the idea there is there's special rules for that, and I'm gonna, you'll see in other videos, so please look at my other videos regarding that. Also, gift. What happens if you receive property as a result of gift? Again, there's special rules for gifts, and you need to look at other videos for that. What about marriage or separation? Marriage or separation of spouses. Okay? Well, the general rule there is that it's going to be a carryover basis, meaning whatever the party had before carries over to the other party. Simple carryover basis. So in, in throughout basis rules, you see some common themes. A lot of basis rules either relate to carryover basis, which means that you take the basis of another person, it, it simply um, carries over, or a substituted basis, which we, we colloqu you know, we as ta in tax jargon, we just call it all carryover basis. So there's transfer basis and substituted basis. Transfer means that you had that you as a taxpayer had something before and you're determining the basis from that, substituted basis um, a similar principle, okay? Similar idea. We call that carryover basis. So you're carrying over the basis from some other item or some other person to you. That's carryover basis. The other basis principle we see a lot is fair market value upon a certain date, all right? So keep those in mind, carryover basis and fair market value. Now the other type of unadjusted basis rule I want to mention includes non-recognition rules and we're going to there's going to be other videos on non-recognition rules you'll see later on okay non-recognition rules but the idea here is that if you have a non-recognition event I mean you don't have to recognize gain or loss and again please see the video on non-recognition rules there's a corresponding basis rules and there's hundreds of non-recognition rules throughout the internal revenue code and they each of those have their own basis rule they're very similar but each of those have their own basis rule. And there's other basis rules out there throughout the Internal Revenue Code. There's basis rules relating to um, discharge of indebtedness, cancellation of indebtedness, and others as well. But these are some of the big ones. These are make, This makes up most of the basis rules out there. Okay, so once we determine the unadjusted basis, and a good way to think about unadjusted basis is once you initially acquire the item, that is the unadjusted basis. From there, the general definition says we have to determine our unadjusted basis and then we have to adjust it for certain items. So we adjust the unadjusted basis, the unadjusted basis for certain items. We increase for certain items. We just call these increases in basis and we decrease for certain items. 
So some common increases include improvements in property, improvements or betterments, or additions, where you add to it. So adding, I'll just say adding on. Some common subtractions from basis, and this is where you've seen my past videos and you're probably thinking, oh, I know exactly this, what this is because you mentioned this. Depreciation, amortization, anything that reduces down the basis by taking tax benefits. So depreciation and amortization are two of the most common types of reductions. And this gives us the end adjusted basis, which I'm going to abbreviate AB. Okay, so we adjust the unadjusted basis. So we take the unadjusted basis plus improvements or additions minus depreciation or amortization over the life of the asset equals our adjusted basis. So this is a running tally. We keep track of this from year to year to year going forward. And then once we have that event, that sale or, or other disposition, then we have to calculate or realize gain or loss. And guess what? This adjusted basis that we calculate here goes up and gives us our definition of the adjusted basis we use in our re realized gain or loss calculation. So that's really the general framework of how we come up. We go, we start from our general definition of initially acquiring on adjusted basis plus or minus certain items. Now there's one other thing I want to mention. I want to talk about allowed versus allowable depreciation. So in the Internal Revenue Code, it specifically says that when we adjust the unadjusted basis, we must use the greater of the greater of the allowed or, or allowable depreciation is what we use to adjust. So allowed is what you actually take. The allowed depreciation is what you actually take on the tax return, what the taxpayer TP takes on the tax return. Allowable is what the calculation is under the law. Allowable is under the law. And again, the rule is you have to adjust using the greater of allowed or allowable. Now, some of you are thinking, well, shouldn't these be equal? And yes, many times they are, but sometimes mistakes are made. Let's say that you calculate depreciation for an asset. I'll do a little example here. You calculate the allowed depreciation as $1,000 for a specific year. But the allowable depreciation is actually $1,100. $1,100. Okay? Well, under the greater of principle, we must take the allowable depreciation when we're adjusting our bucket, when we're adjust, calculating our adjusted basis, right? The bucket that goes down. So on your tax return for the year, you got a $1,000 benefit. Provides an ordinary deduction for depreciation, right? But when you're determining the adjusted basis, you go down by $1,100. Guess what happens? You lost $100 because when you calculate depreciation the next year, you're calculating on the $1,100 subtracted away from the, un from the unadjusted basis and all the other amounts um, over the life, not the $1,000. So you lose $100. Okay, now if we change the facts around and the allowable depreciation was 1100 and the allowable was 1000, you would take the allowed depreciation and guess what? You wouldn't lose anything. Now you potentially could be subject to penalties and um, interest and whatnot on taking more depreciation than you're allowable under law, but at least you don't lose the benefit through the adjusted basis through again, your recovery of capital when you sell the asset later on or exchange it or whatnot. So the moral of the story is it's better to err on the side of taking more, even though you're not allowed under the law, right, than taking less. So you're being you're being penalized for actually following, for being less than the actual amount under law, which the IRS has to have no problem with that. But guess what? You, um, if you go the other way, you don't get penalized. So that's a very interesting moral dilemma there, right? Um, obviously, you want to abide by the law, but you don't want to lose out on this benefit. All right, so that really um, finishes our general discussion of adjusted basis. I hope you've enjoyed this. So now you have the framework for calculating realized gain or loss, defining amount realized, and adjusted basis. I'm going to have more property videos that are going to help you, and we're going to go through some items like gift and inheritance basis and calculating or non-recognition rules and specific non-recognition rules. So thank you for your time. Hope to see you in the next video.